So the answers given, and see, you probably found, got some of these, but you may be surprised by others, were $200, $50, $75, $125, $150, and $175. I, so that seems pretty shocking, really. And when they were asked to work out 10% of $200, the students mainly could find that answer, but they only knew to move a decimal point. They couldn't make sense of it or explain it in any other way. Um, and generally, they, what Cathy found was that the students didn't have any sense of what percent means and really had no idea why the procedures that they were using worked. And Cathy found that among students who were on track to be successful math students, they weren't low achievers. So what she found in particular is that students did not look at the relationship between quantities and they saw every problem that was given as discrete and separate. It was very rare for a student to ever refer back to a previous problem when considering a new problem, even when it was completely related and they could have built from one answer onto the next. So it was really important that those high school students had this experience of number talks as it really would have helped them um, in their high school and beyond. I wrote about number talks in my book, uh, What's Math Got to Do With It? or The Elephant in the Classroom. And even reading about the different ways numbers can be solved um, opened the eyes of people reading about them in the ways they thought about math. So some people, like the seventh and eighth graders I taught, had thought it was kind of against the rules to change the numbers, to break numbers apart and put them back differently. And so here I'm going to show you a little bit of Sophie again. Sophie is the filmmaker that we met in the first class. And this is just a short extract from the interview with her talking about um, what happened when she read about number, number problems. I had one of those aha moments reading your book where you were talking about you know, that, that you can move, move parts of a number around, like the numbers aren't fixed. And I mean, obviously, if you have an equation, but you know, this is made up of how many tens and this is made up of how many fives and that, that you, can, you, can, you can share parts of the numbers. And I think I've always known that um, deep in my subconscious, mm -hmm. um, but I always thought it was it, breaking the rules. Yeah. You know, you're not allowed to break right. a number. You know, like a number is a number. Like you're supposed to do the, you know, mm -hmm. the number is the one you're supposed to be multiplying or you can't make it into some other number, even yeah. if you're just slipping those numbers around. Um, so it always felt like I was cheating. Right. You know, having that articulated, which was something that I had known, but um, mm -hmm. I, nobody had allowed me the freedom to say, you are totally allowed to yeah. mess with these numbers as much as, as you want until you can, you can do it. You know, if multiplying by 10 is the way it works for you, do it. So I'm hopeful that the student version of this class, uh, where students are going to be given various number problems to do, will be a really generative class for them. Um, because in the student version, I'm going to be able to use more visuals and animations that I didn't have time to do for this class. But I hope to really expand their thinking about math by giving them uh, lots of opportunities to engage in number sense. So there'll be different problems to choose for different grade levels, all the way up to adults. And I really hope that this uh, number sense section of the student class will present students with the opportunity to learn to see and use numbers flexibly in ways that will be enjoyable, no matter you know, what experience they came in with. So your task now is to watch two pretty different videos of number talks in action. One's taught by a third grade teacher, Nick Foote, in Barron Park School in Palo Alto. And one is taught by Kathy to our elementary teacher candidates in Stanford. So a really nice way to start number talks is to use dot cards. Um, and these look really simple. They work great in elementary classrooms. But again, they can be really interesting for learners of all levels, including adults. And you're going to see them now with Stanford graduates. OK, here it is. Okay, so I'm seeing everybody's thumb. Would anybody like to say um, how many they think there are? Okay, Stephanie? Ten. Ten? Does anyone have, sorry, does anyone have a different idea of what, how many there are? Okay, so let's share how we saw them. Who's willing to share how, what they saw? Okay, Geraldine, what'd you see? 
so I saw three at the top and then the two at the on the bottom of those preceding three as five. Okay. And then I saw the reigning three and the other two on the bottom. Okay. So five and five. And did you kind of you clump these as I five and five? I clumped okay. the top five and then I clumped the bottom. Okay, so five. this was five for you mm -hmm. and this was five for you. Yeah. So five plus five. Yeah. Who did it like Geraldine did? Wow. No. All right, who did it a different way then? Who saw it a different way? Yay. Okay, so um, could you pass the microphone to Joe, please? I saw it like people read left to right, top to bottom. So I saw the top line of three, and then I added the next line of two to make five, and then I added the next line of three to make eight, and then the le next line of two to make ten. So I'm hearing that you, you went from left to right on mm -hmm. each one, adding sequentially as you went? Yes, line by line. Three, two. And so your number sentence would be three plus two plus three plus two? Absolutely. Okay. Anyone do it exactly like Joe did? Wow, okay. Um, who would like to share their method of seeing it? Okay, so let's, let's hear, well, here, Alana, take it. It's going to get close. Okay, so I saw the two lines of three going across a line of three, and then two lines down, another line of three, and then I saw a square with the remaining four. Did you hear those little, no, ooh. Okay, Alana. So what I heard you say is that you first saw the two rows of three. Mm -hmm. So three here and three here. Mm -hmm. And then you saw a square. Mm -hmm. Where's the square? So the two in the middle, they're like the second line down, and the two on the bottom these two? make a square. And these two make mm -hmm. a square. So you saw a square something like? Like an overlapping square. An overlapping square. Mm -hmm. All right, and then when you, when you did the arithmetic, what did um, you do first? So three and three is six. Uh -huh. And then I could just see the four, so six and four. Okay. Who saw this a different way? So many ways. I'm going to pass it. Um, so I counted by twos. Um, I saw them in vertical lines of two. So in sort of a zigzag, so starting from the left, I saw that there were two top and bottom. So are you talking about these two? The very far left two, yep. Okay. And then going immediately to the right of that, it went down and there were two more, and then okay. up to two, down and up. Okay, so two, 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 mm -hmm. two, two? Yep, exactly. Okay, so, so two, 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 two. Mm -hmm. How did you do the, figure out how many dots there were? Um, I was there? counting in my head as I looked at them, so I saw two, four, six, eight, ten. So you counted by two, so two plus two plus two plus two plus two. Okay, great. And how about one more method? So, okay, Vivian. So I saw them diagonally um, going this way down. So from the top up and then going down. From the and top I, left yes. going down? Okay. And so I started with the largest diagonal okay, line, wait, which had four this. in it. It starts with the, the object furthest to the top. This left. one? Yeah. You saw and this it goes four? straight down. Yeah. Okay. So I saw those four. Then I saw the next three above it. Okay. And then I saw the next two, which is at the bottom. Okay. And then one. Okay, so let's see. So you saw four, and then three, and then two, and then one? Yep. And how did you? I, I knew four plus three. I just knew what that was seven. Okay, so and you started with seven? Yeah, and then from there I just added on the other ones. Actually, I, in my mind, truly, I did it by ones, the two and the, the oh, one. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Okay. Even though so instead of two plus one, you went seven plus one plus one plus one. That's how you really saw it. No, I sorry. No, how did you see it? I did it. it um, oh, this four, is cool. Four plus three. Okay, four plus, plus one three. plus one plus one. Four plus three. So you really did think of the four and three yeah. separately, and then plus one plus one plus one. Is that mm -hmm. how you saw it? Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, are there any questions? We're going to move on to a number, number talk. Actually, I, want, I don't want to actually stop. Does anybody see any similarities between methods? Um, 
I see. Joe, would you like to share? Oh, okay. Well, I noticed that we tend to, at least <laughs> most of us, tend to clump the objects linearly, um, but in different orientations. So Shay would create vertical lines out of her objects. Geraldine and I would make horizontal lines, and Ilana as well. And then, of course, Vivian is looking at them diagonally. Okay. So people saw these in really different configurations. Um, what about Geraldine and Joe's method? What do people notice about that? Okay, so Aaron. Uh, it looks like they saw them in the same rows, but Geraldine added them two rows at a time, whereas Joe just went one by one. So they're pretty similar. What do you mean one by one? Uh, Joe went one row at a time, so three, two, three, two, okay. whereas Geraldine just went five, five. Okay, so if we'd covered this up, we wouldn't have known that they actually saw those things really differently. So what I'd like you to do now is write in the forum, um, just a quick response to that dot card number talk. What do you think people can gain from doing a dot card number talk? Why do you think that they're important to do?